Today I'm in North Wales and I'm about to go underground. 1,375 feet underground to be exact. This is one deep hole. You've got 13 floors going up, you've got, I don't know how many floors going down. It goes miles that way and it goes miles that way. It goes miles? Miles. 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 Yeah, yeah. This is the world's deepest hotel room. Well, I've arrived. The weather is rather inclement, to say the least, um, which means there's going to be a lot of water in the mine. Now, the mine is around about, I think, 100 yards that way, or the entrance to it. So we've kind of got to go up and then down into the mine. Looking forward to it, apprehensive, a little bit scared and a little bit nervous. So we better go to the base camp, which is just further up there where I've got to meet uh, everybody else, get my gear on and uh, hear all the safety information and then go down and sleep in the mine, come on. Been told to meet by a train station, which I think is here, but nobody else is here. And it's raining. The information I got in the email was to meet at this location. I wasn't given a point of contact. Very mysterious. I've only seen another couple, but there's literally nobody else here. There's no signs or anything. Look at that, there is a train actually pulling in. Are you guys doing the, uh, the sleep thing, are you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, nice to meet you. Martin. Tim. Tim. Hiya. Up the train goes. So I did just meet the lady up there. She's gonna get some stuff for us. Uh, it's raining at the minute, so I thought I would just give myself a little bit of shelter in the car, even though we've got to walk up there in this weather. So I can't say I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm gonna take you through a little journey um, into an old abandoned slate mine. And you're gonna stay down there as well. So you're gonna stay overnight, sleeping underground. Sound good? Yep. Right. Woohoo! Perfect, all right then. Now, um, once we go into the mine, it'll be about 10 degrees. So probably a little bit warmer than it is out here at the moment. Um, when we're moving, you'll get warm again. But if you've got any waterproofs, um, I would suggest wearing it because we've got about half an hour walk up to the kit room where I will kit you out with harnesses and wellies and helmets and stuff like that. So silly question, that hole up there, is that where we're going into? Uh, no. Oh, All right. <laughs> another mine opposite the one that we're going into called uh, Riskam. Right, there's me thinking I was going up there. I was like, that's yeah. quite a trek. It's not as high as that then? Uh, not quite, oh, no. The one we're going into today is uh, one of the biggest, well, is the biggest slave one in the world. Crikey. So. Cool. We've got to walk up to base camp to get some harnesses on before we go into the mine. A little bit of a walk. Thankfully the rain has stopped because I was worried that I was going to get soaked. It's not really the place you can bring an umbrella walking up the side of a mine. Well, that's the first time for everything. It's pretty huge, that mine in front of us. Not that way. <laughs> so we head up this way to get some harnesses on before we head into the mine and this big pile of slate has become a world heritage site this was actually removed from the mine all those years ago and if you think about it back in those days they had to do all of this by hand wow look at that step over this wow an interesting fact about slate is that they grind it down to a powder and a lot of that is used in cosmetics and toothpaste did you know that when you're brushing the teeth this morning you was brushing with bits of slate just discovered that's really difficult to walk on and uh, the old little rails for the carts are actually quite handy to walk on wow if you go in there for a dip We're going to get kitted up just in there. Look at this, so beautiful. See those little houses up there? Apparently that's where the miners used to live. Hi. 
trendy as I know. Right, I'm all kitted out. We're ready to go into the mine. It's just weird knowing that it's getting dark. I'm not going to hotel. I'm going to be staying in the mine overnight. But what accommodation have I got? Everybody else in there has got a very simple lodge. I've gone for something a little bit different. I'll show you more when we get down there. There's something so nice about that sound of walking on the slate in the water. So just before we go in, I just need to do like a little um, safety brief in case of um, anything happening along the way. Um, so once we step into the mine, please leave your helmets on until we get down to the deep sleep. Um, only because you don't know what's above your head. The ceilings do come quite low in certain places and I don't want you to crack up in your head. <laughs> this mine originally would have had over 100 kilometers of passageway. Everything looks exactly the same and where you think that might be safe, it's probably not. So it's safe to say, please don't go wandering off or if you see something shiny or something like that, don't just go walk towards <laughs> it because before you know it, you'll be a, a, low, a, a level lower. Do you want me to go in first? Yeah. That is actually, I don't need a coat on. <laughs> so I'm sure you get this question all the time, but is it haunted? Um, no, no. <laughs> I've never seen, seen anything as such, but I smell things. Oh really? So the miners would have lived off really strong tobacco. Yeah. And in certain areas, oh, really? I sometimes get a whiff of tobacco and it really just smells like somebody's just smoked a pipe Spooky. or something like that. Yeah. But, no, not really, I don't think. Um, Do you get like, so, because I read on the website you can possibly hear strange noises and like you get wind down here as well? Oh yes, you do, yeah. So, either, I'm not sure which way we're gonna go today. Um, either today or tomorrow, we'll go through a tunnel and you'll feel like a breeze, but that's just the air coming yeah. through the mountain. That um, keeps it ventilated, I suppose. Yeah. Have you seen the movie The Descent? I have. <laughs> and the descent too. Oh no, imagine waking up having that nightmare in here. Oh, oh god. Well, luckily, um, the descent was surfing in a cave. Yeah. We are in a mine. <laughs> That's what I keep telling myself. Yeah. Um, so you are currently stood on the uh, main haulage incline of this mine. So this is where they would have brought slate up and out from um, to where we just came from. Um, so just to give you an idea of how big this place actually is, uh, you've got 13 floors going up, you've got, um, I don't know how many floors going down, each floor has roughly got 30 metres in depth, yeah, it goes miles that way and it goes miles that way as well. It goes miles? Miles, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so originally this would have had over 100 kilometres of passageway. So you could definitely get lost? Yes, 100%. Scary. If you don't know what you're doing, like what we... For example, go on on the ultimate extreme trip. That's probably an eighth, not even an eighth. Wow. Yeah. So this place is huge. I don't know if I've got a map. I must remember to put the map in. Um, but Miles might have a map of the place that we have. Well, an eighth of it anyway. That's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's massive. Again, a lot of it we can't access anymore because it's completely flooded now. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it is very dodgy as well. You have to really watch your head. This is super sharp. Yeah. Why me? I guess I where I felt you put on my head yeah. I don't know if the camera picks this up, but this is one deep hole. You can barely see the guy just down there right at the bottom. So, we're going to go across here. So we're going to clip ourselves onto the safety line here. 
going to follow it across. I'll be waiting in the centre there, so you're going to have to go underneath me and carry on. Please follow the rope to the very end. Once you're at the very end, walk that way. And there will be a little hole on the right hand side, kind of wait in that passageway for me. Oh my god. Look at this drop. That is a big drop down there. So I can I can lean back to help me get round here, do I? Or how do you do it? If you want, but I would hold on to the rope. All right, yeah. so you can hold on to this as well yeah, then. So right, that, okay. Yeah, that's probably the best bet. Can you, uh, just go back to that side? I don't know if the camera picks that up, but that drop is insane. We're not going over that way. Is there no other way that way? <laughs> we have to go this way. Yeah. I think that's how you do it. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one way You're not funny. All right then, so what's going to happen is I'm going to attach this to your harness. You will then walk forwards, holding onto the black rope, and then you're going to step forward, stand on that bit there, turn round, face me, and then sit down and let go. Mm. Yeah? Keep your feet on the rock. When you get to the bottom, you'll need to unscrew this from your harness. Yeah? So just open it up and then leave the carabiner on the red rope, yeah? yeah? I know it's safe, but I'm always a bit Don't like... Don't tell me right now. <laughs> I do that on purpose, you know. <laughs> And at this point, my GoPro footage went a little bit weird, but I was dropping into this big cave 50 to 100 feet down. Oh my God, this place. Look, you can see this. Well, you probably can't, but it's ridiculously high. I'm walking on this and holding on. It's not too deep. Yeah, I don't want to fall in because that water's real cold. Jumper bar, and this would have been the hand drill that the miners would have used to create these chambers. So they would have had chisel on both ends, a little bit of a weight, and what they would do is pretty much drop, twist, drop, twist, drop, twist, all the way up to here, and then they would turn it around and carry on all the way up here. So one of these holes would have taken them between six and ten hours, depending on how skilled they were. One hole. But they didn't do that down here. They did that up there. So they would climb up a chain. You can still see the chain hanging down there. Yeah. They would climb up that hand over hand, wrap it round their waist once, wrap it round their leg once, and off they went drilling. Yeah, so their aim was to get a fridge freezer sized block of rock down, um, which is a very good example here. Yeah, so they would drill a few holes like that. At the end of the day, they would um, fill them with black powder, a little bit of clay, a fuse. They cut the fuses as short as they possibly could. And then, guess who got to light the fuses? The kids! Correct! Yeah! I'm running stay here. Yeah, well, this evening, um, I'm sure you would have all phoned in and uh, let them know that you were here. Now, uh, usually they will tell you which way to go at a certain place. This is it. Where did they tell you to go? Uh, that way. As, as was back where we They said follow from. the guide. Put <laughs> <laughs> two dead ends that way. So. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And oh, we've made work. it. To the deepest point of the mine, 1,375 feet down. Uh, Miles was there to welcome us with a hot chocolate and a couple of biscuits before we settled in, and then I got to see my room. So there's one, two, three, there's four different lodges here. They are quite small. However, I'm going to be staying in the grotto. You have to check this out as I walk over the bridge. 
and it's what you can't see. That is one big drop. I'll show you that with a bit of light later on, but let's just walk through here. I've actually bought my own light just because it's so dark down here that your head could get hit on here. But this is known as the grotto. Let's go in. Wow. I kind of feel guilty. Everyone else is in a lodge, but I'm here in the grotto. I did pay for this and there is a waiting list for this grotto as well. I actually had to book about four months in advance. We well, might be in five months, but uh, let's show you around. Looks so cozy though. And there is even a little log fire. Obviously fake, but look at that. That is actually kicking out some heat. Nice touch. For a second I thought that was a fridge, but it's not. A towel, which is quite nice. A little plant, somewhere to hang my clothes. I do also have my own sink in here as well with more Halis and Barding, very nice. It just blows my mind there's running water. I know there's lots of water down here, so obviously running water. It is all cold water, that's the only problem. But if you notice, look on the walls, this actually does look like the slate, but it's slate wallpaper. That is crazy, right? And then, then there's the real slate that goes all the way around the room. I mean, some people who are claustrophobic, I guess, wouldn't necessarily like this room. It does feel though really roomy. Surprisingly, it's very warm as well, considering that the cave outside is around about a constant 10 degrees. In here, I think it's a nice and cozy 23. Nice romantic candles there. Nice little rug on the floor. And then of course, You've got the bed, we'll do the bed test in a moment. A couple of side tables, even little reading lights, which is actually brightening up that clock at the minute. So is that the real time? Yeah, quarter past nine. It actually took us three hours to get down here. Crazy, right? There's plenty of space either side. Let's do the bed test. It's actually very, very comfy. Oh, I can't say I've ever laid in a bed and looked up to something like that before. That is kind of nice, but also terrifying at the same time. That's the other thing, I don't need to lock my door. Anyway, should we go and try out dinner? Because I hear that is special. So I have to check out the toilet. What's it gonna be like? Now, luckily I'm the first one in here, so it smells pretty fresh. There obviously are nine other people here, so it probably might not smell as fresh a bit later on so let's give you the tour of the toilet a proper toilet sink look at that even Bayliss and Harding and I believe that's where you go for a number two and what you have to do is you take one of these bags out and then you stick the bag in there you do your business you tie it up and then you put it in a bag out here I don't know why I'm surprised but running water and the chain flushes as well <laughs> so dinner is served and basically what you'd get on an airline right did you nick that from british airways uh somebody <laughs> certainly did and put it on ebay oh did they so funniest things you find on ebay believe it or not most of the planes on ebay <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. So dinner is up. I've got smoky tomato paella, which is very nice. Apparently these are quite expensive. These cost about £10 each. Um, obviously if you're up a mountain, you've got some hot water in these and you can have a nice tasty meal. On the side with a bread roll and a can of Coke. Let's give it a try. It will definitely fill you up. <laughs> and it's definitely smoky. Pretty good. Dessert is lemon drizzle cake with custard. It's quite nice. It's like being back at school. <laughs> wow, this is cozy. So this is what one of these lodges look like. It's same thing as what I've got, a little dehumidifier. Love that little light though. But no sink in here. Yeah, that's really cozy. And and uh it's a really old one, old fashioned, it's from... Yeah, I just saw that. Really old plug. 
Does it actually charge your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, because I didn't think they had enough power for that. I think it's uh, it's handmade because it's probably operate on different voltage. That's something I don't have in my room, photos. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find the thermostat either, but I just had, all I had was that heater on the floor mm -hmm. and the heating under the bed. Yeah. I, have I you noticed know. these hooks? These are, yes. yeah, these are brilliant. Yes. Well, most people have actually gone to bed now and uh, I just wanted to stay up just a little bit longer because um, the atmosphere changes when it goes a lot quieter. It's a really nice dinner and dessert, but as you stand in here, it feels like it's raining just that little bit because obviously water's falling from the ceiling and it's falling on the corrugated roof over there. You can also hear the water running from in the cave over there. Well, as far as evening entertainment goes, once you've had your dinner, you've had a little bit of a chat, it's actually about 11 o'clock right now. Uh, wake up time is, I believe, at 8, or breakfast is at 8, so wake up time might be a little bit earlier. I didn't realise this, but they've got um, heating underneath the bed as well, because obviously the floor can get pretty cold. I love this though, where can I get one of these from? I can actually lock my door from the inside because I was a little bit worried. The only thing you need to obviously think about is in the middle of the night, if you need to go to the toilet, you've got to get up, put your boots on, walk all the way across the bridge. Obviously, don't fall down that massive hole and then head into the toilet. And one good thing about being in the grotto rather than in those, um, well, little sheds is that uh, I don't need to worry about noise because, uh, you know, it's pretty thick walls in here. Just turn these lights off, right? Look how cosy that is with the candles. I wonder how dark it will actually get. Let's turn the lights off. Pretty dark. I'll see you in the morning. Well, I did sleep, but it was sporadic really. I kind of kept waking up. Thank God this bed is heated from below because it starts to feel really damp on the covers on the top. Um, but yeah, with the heating from the underneath, wow, it was toasty. I really did need the toilet in the night, but um, I couldn't be bothered to get out of the warm bed. I'm gonna get up, have a wash. Obviously there's no hot water, it's just cold. And then go and see what's for breakfast. Oh, cold, cold. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's one way to wake you up. morning oh, I'd love a cup of tea please yeah that would be lovely so I think I must be the only one up actually although I did see a couple of people stirring Miles is in the background making me a cup of tea I was so th I'll tell you I was so thankful for the, the under bed heating last right. night yeah. it was um was it a heated blanket or was it under floor There's heating both. kind of thing um, yeah there's a heater under the bed like um, tubular heaters yeah and there's an electric blanket as I say, because it really did make a difference, because I turned it, I thought I'm not going to need that. I turned it off and it got cold very quick right. and almost a little bit damp. And as soon as I turned it on, yeah, it was very cosy. Something so nice just hearing that little bits of rain dropping onto the ceiling. It's not rain, is it? It's from water from the ceiling. Same thing. Right? <laughs> yeah. The first cup of tea in the morning is always the best, isn't it? How about you? How's the grotto? The grotto is, um, you feel it more like you're in a cave, yeah, yeah than yeah. you would be if you're using one of these. Um, but you feel like, yeah, you're right down in the bottom of this cave, because the thought goes through your mind of how you got down here. And it's, but it's almost a bit like a horror movie going through your mind as well, where you actually are. <laughs> and the fact you're so well, far, but, you know. you're so far away from everybody, yeah, and, and it's yeah. so long to get back up to the surface. We've all seen Descent and everything else. And yes, like, oh, we've all okay. seen Descent. But I was the last actually on some of the trips down, so that movie was going from my mind as I was yeah, looking yeah, yeah. and everyone was, I think it was when we were going down the, the shaft where all the water was running and I had to wait quite a while until I went down. Yes. So I was the last one, I was just looking around and then the, the movie was it playing in my mind. Head, no yeah, bacon, is, eggs and sausages. Um, I've gone for right a strawberry there. croissant, interesting, a flapjack and a cup of coffee. So I guess you need some calories in order to use your energy to get up to the surface, which is what we're going to do in about um, 10 minutes. So I can't say I'm overly looking forward to going back up there, but apparently there's a quicker way out than there was coming in. Breakfast was great. Coffee was better. Um, time to get ready to 
head up to the surface. It sounds weird to say that, leaving the, uh, the warmth of uh, my little cave and heading up to the surface. What's crazy is they actually have uh, a live stream of what's going on at the surface just uh, in their little kitchen, which I thought was kind of, I thought it was a screensaver at first. It's gonna take us a little bit quicker to get up to the surface. Uh, I'm probably not gonna film that again because you've already seen that. So I'll see you up top. Oh, just got out, the sun is shining, my eyes are hurting. Oh, it's lovely to smell fresh air. When you come out, then it's got nice weather. Yeah, oh definitely. Rather if you came out and it was rubbish. Coming out of the mine to see that sunshine, ah, oh, what an experience. It was so nice to come up and see blue skies, feel the wind in your hair. I know, I've got hat hair at the moment. If you ever wanted to do this experience, I definitely recommend you staying in the grotto. You get much more of that cave mine experience through the mine shafts, in the caverns. I mean, it was an amazing experience. I mean, it was crazy to think that we were gonna be sleeping in there. We, we came past a group that were going in there to do like a, an extreme activity and they were like, did you stay the night down here? Wow. If you like the video, please make sure you do give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.